As we're in the season for student visa interviews, one of the unique ones is the J-1 visa. So Lisa, please tell us what are the special requirements and who can go for a J-1 visa here in the United States? Uh, the J-1 is such a fun visa category to talk about because like you said, it is really unique. I almost think of it as like our Frankenstein category of visa because there's actually 15 different categories that fall under the J-1 exchange visitor visa category. Um, and what kind of is the binding theme throughout these categories is that all the programs are intended to be uh, a mutual educational and cultural exchange between countries. Great. And these tend to seem to be more kind of shorter programs uh, compared to F1, um, and then also maybe have some stipulations for how they have to spend time back in their home country, correct? Yeah, the F1 uh, student visa category is intended for kind of like a full educational program in the U.S. where the primary goal is to study. With the J1 exchange visitor visa, um, they can be one or two year programs, but um, they're not limited to just students. I mean, you can, you can use a J1 to go to the U.S. to become an au pair, to do a summer work travel program, to do training, internships, and to study as well. I love it. So this seems like a very flexible option to, to come to the U.S. To, to study, to work, to get experience. And friends, if you want to learn more about how to really uh, do well on your J-1 visa interview, stay tuned. Hey, friends. Welcome to Chine Coaching. I'm Rob. At Chine Coaching, we're all about helping you thrive and succeed on your cross-cultural journeys. I've been very lucky to travel all over the world and know the challenges, the ups and downs, especially if you need visas. Um, and so getting that visa to come to America. So we're going to do a special deep dive on the J-1 visa and visa interview, what the visa officers are looking for, how to get approved, the common questions. We've got the perfect guest for that. So Lisa, welcome and please introduce yourself. Hi, thanks so much for having me. Hi, my name is Lisa. I'm a former Foreign Service officer. I was with the U.S. State Department for 13 years. And in the U.S., when you join the Diplomatic Corps, you do get to choose your area of expertise. And I chose consular work or visa processing for my area of expertise. I've served in Indonesia, Sri Lanka, Iraq, France, and in Washington, D.C. And now I currently consult for Argo Visa, where I've helped over a thousand clients. I love it. I love your broad range experience from around the world and how many people you've already helped with their visa interviews. And I'm sure this is going to be helpful for our Chine coaching audience as well. So thanks for being here. Um, let's dive deeper and more into that visa interview. And Lisa, what are the visa officers specifically looking for in a J-1 candidate uh, when they step up to that counter? Yeah, when you're applying for the J-1 visa, it's really important to understand which category you fall under and to know the specific requirements for the category that you're applying. So for example, you know what you need to demonstrate as an au pair is gonna be quite different from what you need to demonstrate if you're going for a graduate medical program, for example. Um, that being said, there are a few things that the officer is looking for in every J-1 visa applicant. Um, the first is that you're accepted into a qualified exchange visitor program. This is evidenced by the DS-2019, which is also known as Certificate of Eligibility for the Exchange Visitor Status. Um, so you, that's that's a form that your sponsor will will help you have, you know, before your your visa interview. The second thing that the officer is looking for in all of their applicants is how are you going to fund your stay in the U.S.? Is it funded by the sponsor? Is it self-funded? Um, does it make sense? The funding makes sense. Um, and is it going to be enough to sustain you while you're in the U.S.? The other thing that officers look for are, um, you know, whether your English is good enough to meet the qualifications mm -hmm. of the program. And again, this is where, you know, the category of J-1 that you're going for makes a difference because English levels need to be higher for some categories than for others. Um, and then are you qualified for the program? Do you do you meet kind of mm -hmm. the essential things that program is um, designed to achieve? Lastly, most importantly, the hardest one, I think, for every J visa applicant to me is, you know, do you have a foreign residence abroad that you do not intend to abandon? Or in other words, are you coming home after your program? 
Mm-hmm. Now, again, depending on the category, there are some um, J visa applicants who have what's called a two year residency requirement, meaning like they are mandated by law to return to their home country for at least two years before they can um, return to the US. These are people who typically have programs that might have been funded by the US government um, or on a certain list of exchange skills that mandate that, that they have to be home for this two year residency requirement. But regardless, even if you don't have the two-year residency requirement, you have to demonstrate to the officer that you are going to come home after you finish the J-1 program. So it sounds like people really need to do their homework with the variety of categories there are, uh, because each one kind of has unique preparation that needs to take place, correct? Yeah, absolutely. Um, Every category is unique, um, but at a minimum, you want to make sure you're able to meet the requirements um, that, that we just talked about meaning qualifications of the program, the English language, the intent to return, part of a a proper program. Yeah, that's super helpful. Um, Now let's talk about maybe one of the most common questions that I get asked is what are the common questions? You know, what's kind of the common questions that someone can expect from the visa officer for those J-1 visa interviews? Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna do one better. I'm gonna tell you the common questions and then what the officer is hoping to hear in your answer. I mean, Even the better. First, <laughs> the most common, common question, of course, is, you know, why are you applying for the J-1? What's the purpose of your program? Um, and implicit in that question is, why do you wanna do this and how is it gonna serve you in your home country. So when you get the question, what is the program? You definitely want to explain what the program is, but also explain why you want to do the program and how it's going to benefit you in your future goals after the completion of the program. If you can do that, then you're demonstrating to the officer immediately right out the gate that you meet the hardest requirement, and that is your intention to return after the completion of your program. Um, The other common question is, you know, who is funding um, the program Mm -hmm. and the pitfall to watch out for here is that the exchange visitor program is intended to be, you know, as we discussed, an educational cross cultural experience. If you're going for training and the work is kind of like incidental to the training, that's fine. Just be careful that it doesn't sound like you're you're using your J1 because you want to work in the U.S. Um, even mm-hmm. though you're allowed to work and you're allowed to be paid for that work, um, that, it, that isn't the spirit of the J-1 exchange visa. And so you'll, you'll want to be clear about, you know, if you're working, why you're working, is it part of the training program? Is that what is going to enhance your skills? And again, how you're going to bring those skills back. The third, probably most common question that you'll get at your J-1 visa interview will be something around, you know, what are you currently doing in your home country? Um, you know, it might be about your job or about your life or who you're living with. And what the officer wants to know when they ask this question is, do you live the kind of life that you're going to come back for? Um, so mm-hmm. if you're going, for example, for a summer work travel program, you'll want to be able to explain how you're looking forward to using those skills to kind of inform your future decisions back in your home country or in, um, you know, uh, apply the experience in whatever it is that you plan to do when you come home. Yeah, Lisa, thanks for sharing those. Again, it's all about helping the visa officer make sense of your situation. Why do you want to do it? What kind of impact is it going to have? And then how are you going to apply that back in your home place? And that's kind of the a s- simple story framework you can think of as you prepare your answers for these types of visa interviews. Um, yeah, that was super helpful. And my friends, if, if you are learning a lot, if this video is helpful, hit that like button to say thanks and cheers to Lisa for all the awesome stuff that she's sharing. And our chai question for you guys who are watching is what kind of category of J-1 visa are you applying for? Um, we've learned that there's a variety of types of J-1. Um, I'm learning that today myself as well. So tell us in the comments, which kind of J-1 visa category, uh, what do you plan to do on your J-1 visa when you come to the States? Um, is it study? Is it work? Is it something else? Uh, let us know. Uh, we'd love to see what's happening in our community. Okay, so Lisa, along with the common questions, another challenge is there are certain red flags, kind of mistakes or things that cause suspicion among visa officers for the interviewing candidates. So what are a couple of those popular red flags that might kind of stick 
uh, for a J-1 visa interview and hurt someone's chances? I think the biggest red flags are when it sounds like you really are using the visa category to go to the U.S. to work. Um, Mm. Or it sounds like you're using the visa category to go to the U.S. and stay. or if it doesn't sound like you're qualified for the program. And I think the easiest way to avoid these red flags is just, you know, take a step back, keep in mind, what is the spirit of the J-1 visa all about? Um, you know, what is it that is is going to be enriching for you about this mm-hmm. experience? And then how that's going to help you in your life back home. Um, I think by explaining these things, you avoid a lot of the kind of red flags that the officer is looking for. And also you want to be assertive in talking about the goals of the program, how it relates to your personal goals, making sure that you sound like a qualified individual for whom this program makes sense. Um, and somebody who's happy and optimistic about their potential and opportunities in their home country. Yeah, I love how you explain that Um, and just understanding the greater purpose and kind of spirit of this visa and then making sure that you align with that. I think that's 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 a great kind of filter for people to think through. And, And Lisa, you know, red flags lead to rejections. We do not want to have people go through that because after denial, it's even harder to come back. So I know at Argo, you and our friends there are really helpful with people uh, who have questions, who have doubts. Um, Yeah, so tell us more about the coaching services that you guys provide that can help people prepare their stories, get those answers right, and avoid these red flags. I think there's there's two primary goals in our consultation services that we provide at Argo Visa that can be really helpful for the J-1 visa applicant. The first is helping um, the client connect the dots of what we've talked about. Like um, people often know like why they want to go to the U.S. They know what they want to do when they come back. They know what the program is about, but they don't know how to put all of that together in a short, digestible way that shows that they're qualified for the visa. Um, most of our clients are really well qualified for the visa, but they just don't know how to express those qualifications in a relevant, interesting way that the office will actually listen and pay attention to. At the end of the day, consular officers just want to make decisions as fast as they can. They have a lot of people to interview. They have to make a lot of decisions in a given day. And the easier you can make it for them to make that decision, the more likely you're going to have a positive outcome. The second thing that we do in our consultations that I think is really valuable is we do mock interviews. So we give a really Mm. realistic scenario of the interview. Um, Personally, I do mine like a full on role play from beginning to end. I don't break character from the first question to the last question. And this allows clients to know what to expect to know that they can handle the worst case scenario and perhaps most importantly to practice their answers and get feedback on those answers like hey this is this really wasn't working or this was amazing when you said that i felt really compelled by by this answer Um, So when the answers aren't perfect, we can offer suggestions, ideas of how to strengthen those answers. So, you know, come to Argo Visa with your ideas. We'll help you package them and make sure that you're, you're polished and ready for your interview. Yeah. One really cool free resource tool that Argo offers is their visa checkup tool. We'll show you guys what that looks like and also share the link to it. But it's where you go and answer about a dozen questions about your situation, your profile. And then it takes all the knowledge from these visa officers and spits back a little score, you know, kind of red, yellow, green on how prepared you are and the likelihood that you're going to be approved or rejected. So that could be a good data point for you guys to see if you need coaching, if mock interviews would help. I know practice is super helpful. Practice makes perfect. And even if you have the right answers, how to communicate those answers is even more important. Visa officers don't really care about your documents. They care about how you tell your story and if it makes sense to them. And so, and you're communicating to people from other cultures. So friends like Lisa at Argo are really good at helping you guys take your situation, take your strong points, and know how to communicate those the best way possible to the visa officers where they say, oh yeah, this satisfies, this makes sense. Of course, they're gonna get approved. And that's what we want to see happen. All the hard work to pay off so that you guys can go 
study and accomplish your goals abroad with getting those visas. Anything else that you'd like to share about J-1 or Argo before I wrap it up? You know, the great thing about the J-1 visa category is the spirit of the program at Argo Visa. We love the idea of people coming to the U.S., gaining that cultural and educational experience and bringing that home with them. So we look forward to working with anybody who has a J-1 visa interview coming up, but perhaps would like, you know, to be sure that they're ready for their interview and confident uh, going in. Fantastic. I love it. Definitely a big fan of Argo and they're one of our special Chine Coaching approved partners. And um, as we try and cover a variety of topics to help you guys in your journey, uh, Lisa and I are also making another video, but about the DV or the diversity lottery. Um, very separate, unique category from J1, but something that might be on your radar as well, or someone from your home country. We're going to be talking about the application mistakes, how to prepare for that visa interview as well. So check out the links for the DV video as well that can help you guys out in your journeys. Uh, Lisa, thank you so much. I learned a lot. Uh, this is kind of a new fun category to explore, and we really appreciate your experience here. It's my pleasure. Thank you. Friends, don't forget to connect with us online, like on social media, Instagram, LinkedIn, uh, Chine Coaching Argo puts a lot of other great free resources on there. Uh, we've got awesome e-newsletters as well, uh, where you don't want to miss our next live webinar that we'll be doing with an Argo Visa officer. Uh, those are tons of fun. We answer a lot of your questions in live Q&A. Um, we love having you all be a part of our community. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see everyone next time. Cheers.